Now, it worked in this case. Does it work in all cases? And if the graph doesn't have an Euler circuit, how will we know? At what point will, will, we, will we be alerted to that outcome? So it comes down to interpreting how the algorithm halts. It's not going to halt at step one when you choose the root vertex. You can choose any vertex. But now you do a loop. You start from this, and you go, 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 and you're just doing greedy until you can't go anymore. And then that loop halts. Okay, How can it halt? It can halt where the starting vertex and the ending vertex are distinct. So I write, it starts at some vertex x, and it ends at some vertex y. But x and y are distinct. And here's the claim. x and y are then vertices of odd degree. Why is that? Why is that? Why is it the case that the starting and the ending vertex, if they're distinct, both have odd degree? Watch this. Here's x. I'm back at x. I'm back at x. This is really enjoyable, isn't it? I'm at x. Now, every time I visit x, how many edges do I use? Two. One in and one out. But now I wind up over here at y. How many times did I visit y? Well, once when I stopped, that was the one in. But I might have visited many other times before. But every time I did, I used two edges, one in and one out. So you see, when you left x, that's 1. And then every time you come back and leave again, you use 2. So if you don't come back to x at the end, the degree of x is odd. And there you are over at, at y at the end. That number of edges that you have used that are incident with them, it both is odd. OK. So if you carry this out, and you, at any loop, get a distinct starting point and ending point, then you can quit if your assignment is to find an Euler circuit, because there isn't one. Now, perhaps you were given the weaker charge. Well, if you can't find an Euler circuit, find an Euler trail. And in the Euler trail, if we can only have two vertices of odd degree, could we have three, by the way? Can you have three vertices of odd degree? Not if you were awake during our last lecture, because the sum of the degrees is twice the number of edges. So you can't have three vertices of odd degree. You can't have two. Okay. So you carry on the algorithm. And if you ever halt in the same way with two distinct endpoints, then you can't even find an Euler trail. But if the algorithm continues and exhausts all the edges but produces one with distinct starting and ending points, then You've got an Euler trail. OK. Now, it might happen that you build a partial circuit, and you scan looking for a vertex that's adjacent with an edge that you haven't walked on, and there isn't one. What is that telling you? 
your graph is disconnected and you're walking around in a component with edges and there's another component over there that's got edges in it. You will never get from here to there. So your algorithm will alert you to that by producing a partial sequence that halts and you can't expand it but there's edges that you haven't walked on. Then the graph is disconnected and it has two or more non-trivial components so it doesn't have either an Euler trail or an Euler circuit. Oh, and by the way, we once asked the question, is it hard to tell whether or not a graph is connected? Didn't we just do that? Here's, here's how. Suppose I have my nifty, jifty Euler circuit algorithm right here. Works every time and runs real fast. But I'm asked to solve not that. I've just given a graph and ask, does it have an Euler circuit? I mean, I mean is it connected? So I, I, I've got the tool for doing the Euler circuit problem, but the problem I'm assigned is different. I'm, I'm asked just to test a graph to find whether or not it's connected. All right, here's how I will use my tool for a different purpose. I just start the algorithm and watch what happens when it halts. If it halts with x and y at the end, at different vertices at the opposite ends of a path, then that's telling me something about the Euler circuit, but wait a minute. X and Y are in the same component. There's a path between them. It's a trail, but there's a path between X and Y. Put the edge in. Just put it in. Can't hurt. Can't hurt. It doesn't change whether or not the graph is connected. Just throw the edge in and then turn the algorithm back on again. Every time it halts and says there's a problem, I can't keep going from X and Y because there's no edge between X and Y. Throw the edge in because they're connected. So it can't hurt by throwing it in. So the graph will be disconnected when it halts with a long sequence and you haven't walked on all the edges because there are edges in another component. So Euler circuit algorithm could be multi-purpose. Okay. Now, having explained that, nobody in their right mind would actually do that because there's much faster algorithms. But that one is not all that bad. Not all that bad. All right, now let's talk about some data structure issues. You're all interested in the applications of this subject. Let's think about how one would actually be implementing the algorithm that we have just studied. We're going to be doing it in class and on quizzes by hand. And so I want you to use the greedy algorithm that I've just taught you. Not because you're 100% mimicking a proof, but I want you to, to, to get the, the concept which is behind this slide. Just, that is, you're going to read the data, and for every vertex x, you have to keep track of the neighbors of x. You're going to create some kind of data structure which for each x, what are the neighbors of x? And that data structure has got to have an order to it. At least it's got to have the concept of a first element. Now, there are lots of data structures that have that, like a linked list, like a row in a matrix, or a heap. So if you're studying heaps, in a programming course, then that's what you're doing. You're, you're associating with a vertex x a heap 
of neighbors, but at the top of the heap is a first neighbor. You won't necessarily sort them the way I'm doing when we do it by hand, but you'll still have the concept of a first neighbor. Now, when you carry out the algorithm and you walk on an edge x, y, if it's the first one, you pop the edge x, y off the heap for x. But what problem must you also solve? You must delete that edge x, y from the heap associated with y. Where is that edge? And if you store your data in a heap, it's in there somewhere. So now you have all the algorithmic issues about how do you access the interior of a heap, find one element, and then delete it, and then reorganize the heap to adjust for that deletion. If it's a linked list, then your only choice, apparently, is to start at the top and begin to scan all the way down until you find that entry. Then you cut the linked list, delete that element, and glue the two ends of the list back together. But that reading of that whole list is very inefficient. And that's why people design better data structures like heaps and other things. That There are ways to penetrate them and access material that's on the inside. OK, now, there was a question which I do you have a question? So I know we have quizzes in this class. Ah. Probably you will see in this term maybe five of them. No more. And you haven't seen one yet, so. Huh? Yes? They will be unannounced. So it would be something like, let's take out a piece of paper and answer this one question, and let me have your answer on the way out. It'll take a grand total of like three minutes. Okay? <laughs>